Welcome everyone, good morning. And welcome to this day. I want you to please share in the chat where you are zooming in for worship um, and send a little greeting to the community. We are blessed and today especially to welcome Dr. Cynthia Wilson and Dr. Sophia Fasua, friends and colleagues of Dr. Joy J. Moore. They are leading us today in a service of word and song around the theme of one anothering. And you can see their bios here on the screen, but just a very warm welcome to our worship leaders today and blessings to you all where you are. Thanks. Yes. Tawa Pano Yesu Tawa Pano Yesu Tawa Pano Tawa Pano Muzita Renu Jesus We are here Jesus we are here, Jesus. Mm. We are here. We are here for you, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Spirit. Now have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, cause we are here for you. Now, would you sing this with me? Jesus, yes. We are here, Jesus. We are here, Jesus. We are here, we are here for you. Amen. Good morning, shall we pray? God, the surprise has overwhelmed us. We are not who we thought we were. We are not all sunshine and roses with an occasional cloudy day. We are brewing storm and pot boiled over. We are ragged bone and blood, sharp edges and riot. We are looters and those who hit it lynching. We're both overwhelmed and embarrassed not worthy of your presence. We are broken. You are God clothed in majesty. And yet, oh God, you call us to yourself in spite of our brokenness, as a hen gathers chickens still wet from the storm to warmth and safety. So we have come today daring to expect that you will still meet with us, call each of us by name and heal. Be present among us today, O oh Lord, in this place and in this space. Amen. Sing this hymn with, along with us. 
I invite you to join with me in this litany. Um, we'll use the parts one and all to try to level some of those distinctions. And I'll be one and you'll be all. We invite you to respond out loud with your mics muted if you would please. When hate is peddled in the marketplace as a tasty delight, neighbor against neighbor and kin against kin. God, teach us to walk in your love. In this world of shadow and mist, where truth, half truth and untruth are stirred together in the same pot. God, light our pathways and teach us your truth. When we have been in the shadows for so long that light hurts our eyes. Heal us from blindness and reconcile us to the very people you have made in your own image and likeness. Teach us, O oh God, how to live in this valley of shadows where night often presents itself as the brightness of day and light is not always trusted. Teach us, O oh God, how to walk in your love and your light. Amen. This morning, it is my privilege to welcome to our worship time, our speaker of the hour, Cynthia Wilson. She's an ordained deacon in the United Methodist Church, a graduate of Dillard University and Southern Methodist University Perkins School of Theology. I just want to clarify that she's a Wesleyan. I got to do it when I can, my, my brothers and sisters. But Wilson is a popular lecturer, a preacher, a teacher, a conductor in concert, an artist, in addition to performing everything from Handel to Mahalia, and Bach to Boogie, she's my friend. And I want you to know that I didn't invite my friends to this worship that you might be entertained with the moment of Black American worship, but I've invited you instead that we as brothers and sisters in Christ may worship God. So today, Open your hearts that God may again intrude into our lives with the conviction that God is with us. Join us in worship and somebody join me in prayer that, it, that if not now soon, God would, God's glory would so fill every place where we are gathered that we would be able to acknowledge the presence of the one who raised Jesus from the dead. If not here, then somewhere, Wherever you are gathered with the people of God, you might have the challenge to love somebody with the love of the risen Lord. And if not at Luther, then God help us. That somewhere the spirit of God might descend on us so that the words that we are challenged to hear from God through our sister Cynthia Wilson would convict us to be what the Holy Spirit alone can create us to be, what God intended for us to be, a glimpse of his love as we love our neighbors. Welcome my friends, but most importantly, welcome the presence of the Most High God. And let the people say amen. amen. A reading from scripture from the Gospel of John the 13th chapter, Jesus said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Well, let the church say amen. I want you to just take one minute and unmute, just one second, just for one second, unmute. And I want the church to say amen. Let me hear you. 
Amen. 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 Praise God. Pray with me. Sometimes, God, it's just good to bask in your presence. And everything around us is changing, but you are so, so good. And we're so glad that you're the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Hallelujah. And we're standing on tiptoe along with all of heaven, waiting to hear a word from you. So speak to us. Speak, Lord, out of history. Speak to us, oh God, and help us to hear the testimony of the saints this day. Speak, Lord, your servants here. And everyone who agreed said amen. 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 I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to another. Now some would ask, is, isn't this an outdated concept in this anything goes world, love one another? Is this still in, is there any use for this seemingly expired philosophy in a world that's so technologically driven? Isn't this the dispensation of I've got mine and you better get yours? So then what good is a concept like caring and kindness and gentleness and love? I mean, besides those things are all invisible. And, and, and aren't we the upwardly mobile, successful, sadiddy, sassy, 2.5 children, two car garage, bring home the bacon fried up in a pan, three snaps in a circle society? Of what use are virtues like tenderness and mercy and patience Remembering the forgotten, do they hold any value in this present age? But Jesus said, this is my commandment, that you love one another, even as I have loved you for this, not the fact that you tithe, not the fact that you go to church every Sunday morning, or even sometimes on Wednesday, not the fact that you serve on every committee in the community, not because you're a Sunday school yeah. teacher, not because of the credentials behind your name, but by this shall people know that you are my disciples. They'll know that you are Christians by your love for one another. You know, friends, in this last half of my life, I just had a birthday, I'm not gonna tell you which one it was, but as I experienced loved ones and colleagues and friends daily transitioning from this life to the next, I am never more aware of the fact that it's later than it's ever been. Mm. As I share in casual conversation with peers, as I counsel with young adults, with couples, with young and not so young seminarians, many, many say, but, but I, preacher, I have loved. The fact is I haven't been loved in return. All right. I have prayed, but my prayer seems to have yielded little results. I have forgiven, but forgiveness was taken for weakness. So why are we even talking about one another? <laughs> Well, Jesus says it because this is my commandment that you do what? Love, love one, another. one another. I think that's a good enough reason, don't you? <laughs> but, but let me make a confession today, may I? At, at, at a few weeks ago, 
um, as I celebrated, you, you want to know what I discovered? I discovered as a woman, as a person of color, as clergy, as a professional Christian, who's charged with keeping it all together, come what may. When, it, when is there time to take seriously this business of one anothering? The other day I was rereading my Angelou's prophetic words from her Grammy award-winning poem on the pulse of mourning. And she says this, lift up your eyes again to the dream. Even though mercy and kindness and tenderness seem to be a part of a distant and dead fantasy, lift up your eyes again upon this day breaking for you, not days past and gone, not broken hearts, not collected disappointments, lift up your eyes today because actually this is the only day we have. And let us dream again a new dream and give birth again to the old one. Now I'm confessing to you today, friends, that there are times when I ask myself, what does one anothering mean to us across shifting demographics? Where we find ourselves having to keep up with the new minorities and the new majorities. Recent statistics clearly show that Latinx communities are now the new minority. African-Americans are the fading minority. And Anglos are trying to discover where they fit in the midst. Just when we thought we had it all figured out how to one another, everybody's position is just changing so fast, we can't keep up. In this age of shifting demographics, an age when we are more racially diverse than ever before in history, a season when in some places of the world, Martin's dream has come to fruition. It might be on life support, but it, there really are some places where black and white, red, brown, and yellow folks are making some attempts to walk together well, without concern for color and respect for content of character. And then there are other places where the heat has intensified. Hmm. And suddenly we're face to face with the realization that we are more insulated racially than ever before. You say one nation under God with liberty and justice for all, right? But at the same time, a nation that walks in darkness with regard to unity, when are we going to figure out that all colors agree in dark? Mm. Yeah. What does it mean in times like these to one another in an era of privatization of education? Mm. When we who are the middle class, the meticulous, the motivated, the moneyed, have taken education into our private hands and mm -hmm. certain children are being left behind, especially in decaying public education systems. And our myopic vision is reducing the intellectual destiny of our own children while least of them are having to fend for themselves. Mm -hmm. What does it mean, friends, to one another, all children, not just some children? How, how can we say that those in one community matter and those in other communities don't? Mm -hmm. what, is, what does it mean to one another in an era where the words till death do us part have simply become cliche? Wow. I'm reminded of the story of newlyweds who were returning from their honeymoon. Immediately, the young bride called a mother who lived a couple of hours away. Mama said, how, how are things going? Oh, mother, she began. The honeymoon was wonderful. It was so romantic. We had a terrific time. But mother, on our way back, Andrew started using really horrible language. Stuff like I, I'd never heard before, really. Terrible four letter words. You, you, can you come and get me, please? The new bride sobbed over the phone, but honey, the mother kind of, you just got married. What, what kind of four letter words? I can't say them, mother, they're too awful, please. And I come home. Darling, you must tell me what has gotten you so upset. What words? Tell me. Still sobbing, the bride said, words like dust and wash and iron and cook. What, what does it mean to one another people whose understanding of right and wrong may be vastly different from our own? What does it mean to one another across these kinds of chasms without losing the standards of wholeness and morality? And, let, and let's talk about one anothering across lines of economic disparity. Can we talk? Statistics show that when, within the last 50 years, we've seen the creation of more millionaires under the age of 30 
and not because of sports, not because of rap or hip hop music, but because of the dot com re revolution. Yeah, technology stock is continuing to rise, creating what I like to call the YFWM club. We've got a whole generation of young fools with money. Amen. Young people who bling and, ching and sell ring, who play with and bow down at the altar of economic prosperity. Young mm. people who know everything about everything in the world, mm. but don't know God. Well, Gold grills, three honeys who have conspicuously unveiled Victoria's Secret, three cars and mm. can't even spell Hummer yet able to convince peers to sell out, be bought out by the illusion of the prosperity message. What, what did, Dr. S did Dr. King say to us? We are fools when we allow the means by which we live to outdistance the ends for which we live. When we maximize the minimum and minimize the maximum, when we allow our technology to outdistance our theology, when we allow our mentality to outrun our mortality, somehow, friends, we find ourselves becoming so involved in the means that we are unable to deal with the eternal matters of life. We, we have great books in our libraries, but we never read them. I'm not talking about you at Luther. I'm talking about folks in California. We, we provide an abundance of material things for our children when what they need most is our love, our affection, our attention. We look up and we see the beauty of the stars, but we aren't moved by them. We hear the profundity in philosophy, in poetry and prose, but we don't really bother to deeply understand it. We have just become eternal fools, shifting demographics, privatization of education, shifting sexual norms, economic barriers. And what about the fact that we now exist in a culture of pollution? Can somebody help me to understand how we want another when our values are polluted with a contaminated political agenda and our minds are polluted with unethical schemes? And our bodies are polluted with crack cocaine, marijuana, alcohol, tobacco. Big business says, it's your thing. Do what you want to do. A culture of pollution when the earth itself has been raped. The soil in which we grow our food is toxic. And, and for those of us who are part of the church universal, in an era when faith communities are more fragmented than ever before, Again, in the words of Martin King, 11 o'clock Sunday morning is still the most segregated hour of the week. Even today, we're still not sure who we believe in, what we believe in, and why we believe what we believe. When, when was the enterprise of one anothering last discussed in the finance meeting? Hmm. We no longer have a, a common symbol, the cross, the communion table, the baptismal font, or the pool are driven by the money line, big budgets, mega buildings, classicism. Some are even afraid to worship in a storefront church. And folks in the storefront church know that they are not welcomed in the stained glass windowed sanctuary. And because they're a member of the cathedral, they look down their noses at folk with tambourines and synthesizers and the fact that they meet their budgets by selling fried chicken dinners. Somebody please tell me how we want another in a day and time when there is no accountability in the church. Oh yeah, and, and we're constantly talking about heaven. But it's time for us to say something about earth. It's all right to talk about long white robes over yonder, but folks need suits and clothes and shoes down here. It's fine to talk about streets flowing with milk and honey in heaven, but there are some hungry folks right down here. It's all right to talk about the new Jerusalem, but when are we going to start talking about the new Chicago, the new New Orleans, the new Miami, the new Atlanta, the new great again America? 
Again, Dr. Dr. King, any religious faith or denomination that professes to be concerned about the souls of men and women and is not concerned about the slums that cripple the soul, the economic stagnation of the soul, the government agendas that damn the soul is a dry, dead, do nothing religion or denomination in need of new blood. I believe that the greatest thing the church can give the world is to be different from it. What do you think? I was caught at a red light at a quiet intersection the other day. Found myself jamming with the music of one of my former students. You might know his name, Kirk Franklin. From the corner of my eye, a woman holding up a cardboard sign that said, and y'all know how we act when we see these folks standing on the corner at the light. I started reaching down and, and pretending to turn the radio knob. Am I the only one that does that? And the light would not change folks. I turned the volume up a little as if that was gonna make her go away. And the light would not change. And I heard the spirit said, say, fool, lift up your eyes. Her sign said, traveling, need help. God bless you. And the light still had not changed. So I, I let down my window. She smiled. A few, a few teeth were missing. And, and as I looked closer, she had big bruises from being beat up by her circumstances. Clearly her hair hadn't been shampooed in ages. And I asked, where are you going? She said, I'm traveling to El Paso. My old man beat me. I'm just trying to get my kids back. But miss, if you could just spare a dollar, I'd appreciate it. But if you can't, God bless you. How dare I turn up the music on that sister? How dare we, the church, refuse to be concerned about the souls of women, children, and men who go unnoticed, unattended to, uncared for, unloved? How many of you know that online ministries are booming? They're thriving because it's so hard for social misfits to get in. Young people who complete a prison sentence and who now need a job and a place to live, the recovering addict who looks perfectly normal until she rolls up her sleeves and the track marks are up and down her arms. Can we talk folks? God has a thing for misfits. Any Bible scholars in this room? In the Old Testament, do you remember meeting a beautiful black young slave woman named Hagar? Hagar works for Ms. Sarah who's barren and decides to help God out. Miss, Miss Sarah, she gives her maidservant to husband Abram to produce a child. Ishmael is born to Abram and Hagar. I know you already see it, don't you? The haves and the have nots. It's an absolute mess, but God sends a message to Hagar. The Lord has heard you and has answered you. And what about Rahab, a prostitute? who saves two of Joshua's spies by single-handedly hiding them and helping them to escape. Rahab shows up in the lineage of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Most of you would know the name Esther, an orphan girl who unraveled a, a sinister plot to massacre her people when, with amazing creativity and courage, she risked her life to save the nation of Israel. Lest we forget, Jesus was born to an unwed teenager. Mary, the mother of Jesus, became his first disciple. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. I know you have days when you don't feel any love at all coming your way. I know there are moments when I feel like nobody cares I know there are times when you've been down so long 
getting up doesn't even cross your mind. I know you go through seasons when no, no one offers a kind word, when nothing seems to be going right in your life. If you're anything like me, there are times when you say to yourself, I ain't feeling no love in here today. But I came church to encourage you. I encourage you to go low in a foot washing like service to one another. I encourage you to lay your lives down, your privileges for one another. I encourage you to one another, your brothers and sisters across socioeconomic lines to one another across racial and ethnic lines, to one another the weakest, the oldest, the youngest, to one another the sick, the disabled, the lonely, to one another the troublemaker because love covers a multitude of faults. My brothers and my sisters, love is not puffed up. Love is not jealous. Love forgets itself and love trusts Christ. Love overflows with the love of Jesus. Love rushes in to serve and to encourage. And love reaches out to meet the needs of others. And so I declare and I decree today in the name of Jesus the Christ, that when this church gets serious about one another, then our world will be blessed beyond measure. And when we do this, and when it does, I just believe that we will know how to reach out and touch somebody's hand make this world a better place if you can reach out and touch somebody's hand make this world a better place You know it, sing it with me. Reach out and touch. That's it. Somebody's hand. Make this world a better place. Yeah, sing church. If you can, reach out and touch. Somebody's hand. Make this world a better place if you can just try take a little time out of your busy day to give encouragement to someone who's lost their way would I someone, I want you to look them 
in the face. I don't know when it was the last time that you on purpose slapped somebody in the face with a smile. But if you're near someone, would you do that? Would you just look at someone and, and smile? A smile that really suggests that you have the kind of love that keeps on giving. <laughs> Thank you, Joy. And if you are near someone and you're not uncomfortable with just holding up a hand and pretending to give them a high five, that's another kind of love that you can give at this moment. And then if you're not near a person, then look at your computer and you might be able to see your own reflection. Look at yourself and love on yourself. You deserve a little love today. Sing it with me. Reach out and Just simply say to yourself, lay your hands on yourself. Place your hand on your heart. Or place one hand over the other. Place your hand over your head. Whatever it is in your body, in your mind, in your soul that's lacking peace. Just say to yourself, peace be still. eyes, just say peace. Over your mouth, say peace. Ah, yeah. Peace in your home. Peace on your job. Peace as you walk up and down the campus. Peace in the classroom. Peace in your local church. Whenever the Lord says peace, there will be peace. to end this time together. I have loved being with you. I pray God's choices, blessings on you, Luther. <laughs> and I want, I want you to sing this with me. Let the church say amen.
much, Dr. Wilson, for your proclamation today in sermon and in song. Your presence here is a blessing. We are grateful for you. Bless you. And Dr. Fasua, thank you for tending to this liturgy and for leading us together in worship. Amen. We are grateful for you both and are blessed by your presence with us today. Thank you for witnessing here with us. Thank you, Brittany, for making things run smoothly for this service. You have made this service just great and have helped us to participate well. And thank you again to Pastor Jenny for continually caring for this community. And thank you to the rest of our chapel staff. We're grateful for our community here and grateful we could gather this day and always. May God Peace be with you all as you go about your day. Blessings to you. Peace. Peace. Peace.